As many of you know, my name is Shekinah Fashaw. I am the founder of 1140 Glory and the Renaissance Conference. Uh, just as background for those of you who may not know, 1140 Glory refers to the 11 days it should have taken the Israelites uh, to make it out of bondage in Egypt, but the 40 years that it actually took them to make it to their promised land. So 1140 Glory refers to the glory that is in with the within each and every one of us to achieve our purpose and reach our calling in life. Um, and it's this reminder to do that within the 11 day journey instead of 40 years. And we do that through obedience, through following our passions, through really pressing in to what it is that God has called us to do. Uh, and so, Make sure I can fix that. Okay. Uh, so what we have today happening is the Renaissance uh, webinar series. This started with the Renaissance Conference, actually, which happened during MLK Day weekend uh, this year, 2019. Um, out of that conference, there were just so many pe passionate people that were connected, um, so many new ideas birthed, and so we wanted to continue to cultivate those ideas and cultivate that type of um, network and, and environment. And so we kind of conceived this web webinar series that we're offering every month free um, to folks. And, you know, in the past, I think I went for passion planning. Um, we had someone uh, last week, uh, Ms. Shonda Davis, talk about her business and how she built that out of her passion um, and really pushing forward as an entrepreneur. And so this week we have Dr. Helen Kennedy uh, with Navigational Signals to Success. Dr. Kennedy, I have her bio here, um, is a wonderful woman, um, woman of God, a teacher, a powerful uh, motivator as well. And so we're so excited to have her here with us. Um, and just kind of as background, um, Dr. Kennedy has been doing this for a number of years now in terms of being a life coach, um, but also helping people build their businesses. So uh, she's helped with 1140. She's helped with the Renaissance. Um, even my parents' ministry, she's helped with that. Uh, so she really is a wealth of knowledge, and we're so excited to have her here. Um, Dr. Kennedy, just to name a few things, is a native New Yorker. She was um, born in New York. She is currently a resident of Broward County, so she lives in South Florida. And I think that's another beautiful thing about the Renaissance is we're all kind of all over. We have people on here that are in Florida. I'm in Rhode Island. We have people in Georgia. So all of us are from all over. We have people that, you know, are con we're connected to in Ohio. Uh, so just kind of staying connected. Uh, she has served in multiple capacities um, as a church administrator. And this is also Administrative Appreciation Day, I think. Um, so that's exciting, too. So if you all know any administrators, be sure to shoot them some love through a text or an email today um, and let them know that they are appreciated. Uh, so I will let Dr. Kennedy kind of take it from here um, and share, you know, um, share a little bit more about herself and then kind of go into what she has to share with us today. And then I think afterwards we will take questions. Um, so I hope everyone's excited and we'll go ahead and get started. Well, thank you, Shekinah, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to share with you and the Renaissance team. Are you getting any feedback from me? I hear you perfectly fine. Maybe if we can okay. well, okay. we'll check in um, and let us know. Okay. Problems. And we have others that, will, um, that don't mind their faces because I want this to be a little bit interactive on tonight. Um, maybe it's me. Let me see. No, there. Can you still? I can still hear you. I can okay. see you. I think most people's like cameras are off, or some people okay. are on via phone. Or okay. A mobile device. Right. So. Again, um, I'm, I am so appreciate the opportunity to share with your viewers who come. And I want to just say I am godly proud of you and all that you're doing, the passion that you have to fulfill and bring to life everything that is in you. And that's what this is all about. And, and that's sort of what my passion is. My passion is helping others to identify their passions and, and to go forward to run with them. 
Um, you know, I heard Miles Monroe in a sermon one time say that the graveyard is the wealthiest place on the earth because there are so many unrealized dreams and ambitions that people have left inside and taken with them to the grave. And so I myself am making sure that everything that's in me, I'm bringing it on the scene and I wanna help those who are around me do the same thing. I have been doing this most of my life as far as coaching um, from as far back as I can remember a, a middle schooler. And, um, you know, I was always kind of the go-to person and I didn't know the advantage of it for a long time. Um, I'm close to my mid sixties and I think I probably tapped into my purpose right around 50. So I'm behind um, the eight ball, but I applaud you. I applaud your generation that you're not like we were and we were waiting. There was a lot of fear. There were a lot of words spoken that we could not do certain things. And um, because it wasn't either for a woman to do, et cetera. But all of those taboos are taboo now. And, you know, you can have what you say. There's a, a portion of scripture in Genesis where God looked down and he saw the men, he saw the men building this tower and he looked down and he says, listen, there is nothing that is withholding that, that they can't imagine that will not come forth. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. So he knows what's in us. And um, so I encourage everyone that, that's tuned into this webinar, we're going to give you some pointers. We're going to try to answer some questions for you. But if anything, my success tonight will be if I can move one person to do something they've never done concerning the dream. That's what I define as my success tonight. Um, I do thank God, and, and let me just inject this here. What the dreams and all that we have is what he's placed in us. Okay, it's not a big idea or something that we ourselves conceived, but it's something that he put in us that has to do with our purpose in this life. And once we discover that, I'm telling you, it's the most amazing journey of life that you can ever have. I remember doing real estate for a portion of time. I did real estate because my mom wanted somebody in the real estate. My dad was hoping that some of us would go to the military. I tried to go to the military, but at the time I had two children and they weren't taking in women with children. I would have had to sign over my rights. So for a large part of my life, I lived on the basis of what other people wanted me to do. And, and we have a, a uh, in a good way, a somewhat rebellion where young folks today are doing what they're passionate about. And so I can appreciate that. I can appreciate that in this season of my life. In fact, I have six children and one day the Lord said to me, and, and as Shekinah has says, I'm a minister, so it's just in me and it has to flow out. But I remember one time the Lord saying to me, and I had the opportunity at various times to stay home with my children. He told me, study your children this particular summer. He says, I want you to study your children and see what I have put in them. And so that particular summer, because yeah, I had my, my daughter who talked all the time, so I thought she would be a teacher. And then I had this one that sports. I had my own idea of what I wanted my children to be. And, and I got checked. He said, see what I put in them. And then I want you to aim them in that direction. The Bible says as children are, as, as arrows in the hand of a mighty man, so are the children of one's youth. What do you do with arrows? You aim them at a target. 
And so those of you that are viewing today, there is something in you. I can't see it. Shekinah can't see it. Visibly, we can't see it. But we know that there is something that is in you, and it is time now for you to bring what's unseen on the scene. And, and that's what we do with our um, coaching venture. So again, tonight, for the purposes of this webinar, I'm here to empower you with some information. I want you to start um, taking self-examination. There's some questions that I'm going to put out there. The thing with coaching is we don't give you the answers. We help you discover the answers yourself. Now, on the coaching side of the business, um, that's where I may give you direction, et cetera. But for the most part, with coaching, it's all about self-discovery. So I'm going to empower you with some information, and hopefully I'll motivate you to move forward to accomplish those things that um, you have the potential to accomplish. At the end, I am offering a free, free, F-R-E-E, 15-minute coaching consultation just to hear your ideas. I'm a visionary. And, and when people speak words to me, I see. And so I begin to project. Whenever someone comes in my office, I give them permission, tape record me because when I start, I can't go back. Okay, it, it just flows. But I am offering those of you that are part of this webinar tonight that free 15 minutes. We can do it by video conference or telephone where we can just talk about what your ideas are, where you want to go, etc. Okay, so I gave Shekinah um, soon Dr. Fashaw. <laughs> Very, very soon, Dr. Fashaw. I gave her a couple of titles, and this is the one she selected, okay? And it is Navigational Signals to Success. Navigational Signals to Success. And we know that in this life, there are signals, there are signs everywhere that they direct what we eat, they direct what we drive, you know, through commercials and, and marketing, et cetera. These are signs or these are signals, and what they're signaling is what's in you. What you go after is it, it comes from a place within you, a desire that is within you. And um, we know in our vehicles, last year I got a brand new vehicle, and it has all of these navigational uh, you know, quips to it. Um, we, we have, I now have something that if I kind of move out of my lane, it will jerk me back into my lane. And sometimes when we're on this road to trying to bring forth what our purpose, to manifest our purpose, we change lanes. We change lanes and, and we get into lanes that we're not going to be. So I've got that little signal there. I've got a backup camera. You know, my goodness, when you start going forward, you got to be careful of looking back. OK, we can look back if it's going to motivate us to keep going. But sometimes we look back to go back. And as you were talking about 1140 glory and the children of Israel, you know, going this wilderness wandering many times they desire to go back because it seemed hard to them. That wilderness experience was a hard place and all of us have to pass through it. But how quickly we will pass through our wilderness will depend upon the tools that we have and, and how we employ them. Um, of course, we have caution signals and um, you know, we have signal lights. There's all kinds of signals that are in our lives that direct when a woman gets ready to give birth, you know, those contractions start. It's a signal that this baby is ready to come forth. By the way, I'm a brand new grandmother. And um, in a minute, you might hear him. Hopefully, he'll sleep through this segment. We have MapQuest. We have Google Maps. I prefer Google Maps. 
Um, I've not, never gotten lost with Google Maps. MapQuest has taken me into some places that I didn't want to go. So all of these things that we have, if you're going to fulfill your purpose and, and your plan, the plan that God has purposed for your life, then it's important that you navigate this journey um, purposely um, with caution. <coughs> Excuse me. Because you indeed have been created, amen, to serve a particular purpose here on the earth. Let me just get a sip of lemonade. Okay. All right. So navigational signals to success. What does that mean? Okay. Well, let's take, let's take a road trip. All right, let's take a road trip. And, and I know I have Shekinah. I need one or two more people to not be afraid, show your face, and um, unmute your phone because I want you to participate in this segment. And while Shekinah is on here, let's see, can we get somebody? Anybody bold enough? All right. Well, we'll go with Shekinah. <laughs> let's take a trip. We're all going on this trip, okay? All of you that have logged in tonight, we're on a trip right now, okay? And, and so the first question is, well, who, well, it's not the first, but one of the questions, who all is going? So on your journey to your success, who's going with you, okay? What's going to happen when you get to that destination, and these are all things we consider. My sisters, we're talking about taking a trip maybe to Alaska. And, um, you know, how many of us are going? When are we going? It's the who, what, when, where, and why question. So when you're talking about planning out um, your desire, your purpose, your business, whatever it is you want to do, you have to answer these questions. Who all is going? What will happen when we get there? Where are we going? That's probably the first question. Where are we going? Hmm. When do we want to go? When do we want to go? Why are we taking this trip? Okay, what is the purpose of it? How will we get there? What will be our mode of transportation? And how much will it cost? These are just some of the questions and before you start any endeavor, you have to answer these questions. You know, many people, when, when I share with our group here, and I've got a, a lot of young people and I'm, I'm encouraging them to see what's in their hand and, and um, create a business. Don't go get the business cards and the website, you know, and, and, and your little logo shirt. And, and you don't have a plan, okay? You have a vision, and your vision is noted. It's in that business card. It's in that. But don't put that out until you have the plan. I read a statistic that in 20, by 2015, I think it was, there was about 600,000 new businesses, by December of, of 2018, that had dropped half. And, and so this comes from um, SCORE, and that's one of the websites I think that you all should engage in if you're going to start a business venture. Um, please sign up and get the SCORE newsletter, um, SCORE.org, S-C-O-R-E.org. And, um, and, and the, uh, the writer of this article says, most of the time businesses fail because of poor planning. Okay, and if there's poor planning, then when you hit that first speed bump or, or that first pothole, then you're just ready to give up. Okay, but we want to push, we want to push, hopefully you won't damage your vehicle when you hit that pothole and give up, but we want to just keep going. We want to get there. So we're going to start tonight and I'm going to ask a few questions and we've identified through our title on tonight that we want success. That's our goal. Whatever it is we set out to do, we want success. So the first 
question or the first statement that I want you to uh, complete is, I want to be successful at. What is it that you want to be successful at? Okay. Um, and then we have to define success. All right. Because my success definition may not be yours, but it's still success. Okay, everyone has their idea of what success looks to them. So the next statement would be, I will be successful when? In other words, what does it look like? What does success look like? Again, for me tonight, success will be if I get at least one coaching client out of this, okay? Or if I get several of you to take the 15 minutes. To me, that's success. All right, so a lot of times we wait for the big picture, but nobody became successful or nobody, you know, won the big game overnight. They didn't all arrive overnight. They took step by step by step. So when you get there, what does it look like? And there are a lot of many successes until you get to the big one. All right, for some you know, it, it's a six-figure bank account, seven-figure bank account. All right, for others, it's the accomplishing of a college degree. All right, for others, it's just being a good homemaker. All right, so everybody's idea of success is different. And a lot of times, this is why you've got to pinpoint your path. Because if you don't, you'll be trying to live somebody else's life, and that will not bring you happiness. Okay. Um, okay, let's move on. So, again, when you're traveling down the road, when you're traveling down the highway, there are mile markers. At every mile, there's a marker that tells you how many miles you have to go. If you're going north here in Florida to the Florida state, Florida, Georgia state line. All right, if you're going south, it'll take you to the end, to the very tip of um, Florida. Those mile markers are those many successes. And so for some of you that have, have dialed in one tonight, this is your mile marker one, okay? Because perhaps you haven't known where to go or how to get started or what have you. So the mere fact that you dialed in and you're listening to us tonight, it's a success. A lot of people procrastinate. And so those are the ones, the procrastinators are the ones who have made the graveyard wealthy. We don't want that to be our portion, okay? If you stay throughout um, the entire webinar tonight, and we're just one hour, so we're gonna move right along, but if you stay the entire time, you will have gained more mileage, more traction, why? Because you will have gained information to give you direction toward your success, whatever that may be. So I propose it's every little step that you take toward achieving your goal, that's what success is. It's the little steps. It's writing it down. It's speaking it into the atmosphere every morning. It's picking up a book to read and finishing it that's related to what your purpose is. It's re researching your passion. It's taking advantage of the 15-minute free consultation with h &K Coaching and Success. All right, so we've got the big picture, success. So now we've got to answer our own personal questions tonight. What do you want to be successful at doing? That's your way there. What do you want to be successful at doing? Why do you want to be successful? Why? Is it, you know, to please, and, and, and again, I don't know who's on here, so I don't know what your station right now in life, but if you're a college student, it may be because you're the first generation college student and you want to bring that degree home to your parents, okay? Um, to somebody else, it, you know, it may be that 
you've been told no all of your life and now you're ready to you know push forward and say i'm gonna show y'all something when i left new york to come here and this is my my background i was strung out on drugs i left new york at the suggestion of someone that i met who said go to florida it's cheap to live that was in 1977 I knew I was tired. I knew I wanted to get away. I missed God. And so I didn't even know where Florida was on the map. But I resigned from my job. I was a sophisticated junkie. I resigned from my job. I bought a ticket. I gave away everything with one suitcase. And I said, I'm going to prove to everybody who said I wouldn't be nothing that I'm going to be something. Okay, so, you know, that may be your success story, all right? Because people had counted me out because of that lifestyle I lived, but I'm on the Renaissance webinar tonight, motivating somebody else that you can make it if you try. Okay, why do you want to be successful? What benefit will you get out of being successful? How will you feel? Okay, for me, it is, again, my passion is helping people. I've had the houses, I've had the car, I had some money in the bank at one time. So for me, success is none of those things anymore. Okay, it's more so watching the next generation or two be better than I was, achieve more than I had. And if I can just give you some nuggets to help you do that, that gives me satisfaction. That's success for me. When will I accomplish it? We're talking about here really setting goals. And, and you've got to put a time frame. Okay, you've got to put a time. You just can't say one day I'm going to be. No. By the year 2022, mm -hmm. I propose to have such and such accomplished. Okay, so between now, 2019, and that date, 2022, April 24, 2022, what will you be doing in the meantime to take you to that place? Okay, when will I accomplish it? And who is my support? We're going to talk about that a little bit tonight. Who are my supporters? Is it family? Is it coworkers? Is it friends? Is it strangers? Um, is it the government? You know, who is going to support me in a tank? And so these are things that you need to plan out before the business card. Okay, before you get a website or what have you, these are the things that you need to think through. Okay, so this is a business seminar, okay, webinar. And um, you want to start a business. I think we have a lot of those that are here. So let's talk about this. And, and this handout that I'm going to go over is what was shared at 1140 this year. And um, so I'm just going to go through some of it and then we'll answer some questions and, um, and I'll share some other uh, goodies with you. So you want to you wanna start a business. Where do you start? You start with answering the question why. We just talked about it. Why do you want to start a business? A desire to start a business differs from one person to another. For some, it's to leave a family legacy. For others, it's just because they don't want to work for others. So what is your why? Because your why will be your motivator during the various phases of a business relationship. And yes, it's a relationship. Like any personal relationship you may have, you're going to have your ups and downs. So as you are planning and developing this business, you know, there's going to, there may be some setbacks. There will be some setbacks, not maybe. There will be some setbacks. But it's just for you to refocus. It's for you to get those tires in alignment. Okay, so that you can have a smoother ride for the next course. 
Okay, what type of business do you envision? Mainly you have three, let me give my disclaimer here. I am not an attorney, I'm not giving any legal advice. <laughs> I'm not a certified public accountant, I'm not giving any accounting advice. You need to have as one of your supporters or two of your supporters, an attorney and an accountant, okay? To lead and guide you along the way. But there are three, basically three types of business. Manufacturing, and that's when you produce a product, okay? Then you have merchandising is where you are a reseller. And then there's business. So those are the three major umbrellas of businesses and yours should fall under one of those. I've been in service most of my life, uh, professional service. My particular roles have been that. And now under coaching, even under pastoring, it's, a, it's under the service industry. However, my granddaughter and my daughter-in-law have just launched our body. Okay, let me show you what we have here. And, and this, the purpose of this is for a legacy. Sometimes I just get bored. So we have our fragrant oils, we have our salts and our butters and all, and uh, we're providing nature's bath spa, okay? Um, with all natural products, we're doing it home-based. All right, and, and so I've got my 10-year-old granddaughter. She's busy, she's active. I, I tell you, she's got me going. So you don't even want to, those of you that have children, do not wait. I was an entrepreneur doing lemonade stands or selling Girl Scout cookies or whatever it was. That's where I started. It didn't all start when I hit 50. All right, so what type of business are you gonna do? How will your business be formed? And here we're talking about entities. Okay, will you be HMK Coaching and Consulting is a sole proprietorship, all right, as opposed to a corporation. So you have sole proprietorship, you have partnerships, you have limited liability companies, I'll get into that. You have for-profits, non-profits, and then you have professional co-ops. Um, and I'll just give a um, description of these. Again, I'm not giving legal advice and telling you how, but you might want to see an attorney or look at where you are. This is my rule of thumb. What, For instance, with our um body and soaps and butters and and soaps and rubs i'll get it all together but with that particular business because we have a product that could cause injury we are going llc okay as opposed to sole proprietorship we're limiting our liability because somebody may get a rash all right, have or have some other type of reaction to that. So you have to look with my service industry. I don't have to go corporate as yet. I can manage it because I'm keeping my business where it's manageable for just me and an assistant. All right, there are those of you that are going to expand out in in car wash business, childcare centers. Um, you know, you can go as far out as you want to go. So you have to look at those various types of organizations that you are going to form your business under. And when you form, when you legally form that business, what you're basically doing is creating a birth certificate for your business. So, so for proprietorship, proprietorship, the pro, it's easy to set up. It's the least costly. It's easy to sell one person. It's, it can be a one person show. The con of it is it's unlimited liability. So I am putting my possessions, my assets at risk. Okay. So that's one thing that you want to consider. Partnership is owned by two or more individuals. And again, 
Um, if it's a general partnership, you share in the liability, you share in the, the assets or the proceeds of the business. Um, if you have a limited liability company, it's similar to corporation and partnership. Okay. Um, and one thing about this is that it's not a corporation. It acts like a corporation, but it's not a corporation. It's more along the line of a proprietorship with two or more individuals. Here in Florida, if you file for an LLC, you're filing articles of organization and not articles of incorporation, okay? The LLC can be taxed as a sole proprietorship, a partnership, or a corporation, and that's where you would need to see your CPA or an attorney to advise. If you're in um, businesses like real estate, you do real estate as a salesperson or broker, um, even if you're doing your own um, selling investment, LLC can, is right for you. But again, you want to get some legal advice in that regard. Corporation for profit is a separate entity. It's separate and apart from you, whoever the board is or, or the organizers of that corporation. Um, you, the corporation pays taxes on its income. There is very limited liability owners of it. Um, and even though we say it's a separate organization and, and what have you, and there's limited liability, there's going to be liability all across the board. If you break the law, you're liable for breaking the law. If you injure someone, if you don't uh, fulfill a contract, there's a liability associated with that. So regardless of what form of business you establish, there's always going to be some liability. Nonprofit, I'm very familiar with nonprofit because I've been involved in it for most of my life. It too is a separate legal entity that uses its profits for educational or charitable purposes. So you, when, when you're starting a nonprofit, listen, any time that we organize under a state charter of any kind, the state is giving us permission to do business, especially with a nonprofit and understand this. And again, go to an attorney so you can find out what all of your benefits, what all the rules and regulations are. People tend to think that they start a nonprofit, that they own it. And really, you do not. It is a somewhat of a public entity. And if you decide, I no longer want to run this nonprofit corporation, then guess what? You either dissolve it, pay the bills, and turn all of the assets over to the state or to another nonprofit. You don't bring them home. Okay? And then you have a cooperative um, type of business. And that's a member organization that owns and operates business for the benefit of its members. Um, that would be something like Foresters or um, I think AA, AARP kind of falls under that where it provides services, but it's a member service only. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on. Shekinah, can you give me a time? It is 8.40. We have about 20 minutes left. Um, we also have a question from Jonna if you want to take questions. Okay. When you're providing a service, Coach and Graphic, what are some tips for structuring pricing? This, um, what's the name? Jonna. Okay. This, um, you need to do a market analysis. Um, depending on where your location is, if you're strictly online, and this is where your business plan comes in. You have to research what other people are doing and what makes you, so your prices either need to be comparable to that, or 
if you go higher or if you go lower, why? So there are a lot of things involved in there. Who's your niche? Who are you going after? Um, for instance, my coaching business. All right. My rates are on the low end of what coaches can make. Why is that? Because my niche is for those who may not ever go to a coach or, or you know, even know that they need a coach, but I'm affordable to the average person. All right. So again, you do your market analysis, you find out who your niche is, and then you set there. So in your planning phase of your business, there's a lot of research that goes into it. Okay. Um, can, I mean, you can go and set prices, um, but it, again, it's, it's your market. Who's your customer? And the other thing is everybody is not your customer. And even though somebody else is doing what you're doing, there's room for both of you at the table. Okay, so that's a little one there. Any other questions? She had another uh, one right before that. When selling a physical product that you are not directly manufacturing, such as clothing, do you have any suggestions about sourcing manu manufacturers? And I found a little blog piece, so I threw that into the comment section for you. Okay, that's in the chat room there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was her first. Oh, okay, great, 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 great. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. So when do you want to get started? And, and here we're moving into that. Thank you, um, Jonna, for kind of leading us there. Some people think that getting business cards, website, or flyer is the beginning, but the proper foundation must be laid if you're going to have a chance for success. And here's where the market research and competitive analysis comes in. Who else is doing what you do or want to do, where you want to do it? This will determine where you will find customers for your business. The analysis sets you apart from your competitor. What advantage does your business have over other businesses that are in your location? Okay, write a startup business plan. A business plan is like your map, okay? It's going to take you to the rest stops. It's going to take you to the eateries. It, it's going to direct your business, laying it out plain and simple. Write the vision and make it plain, the scripture says, so he that reads it can run with it. All right, so when you're looking at, and I know that was a question, where can we find financing? You have to have a business plan, okay? You have to have a business plan. And there are startup funds that are available to you. I'm going to actually, for those of you um, that have logged into the conference, I'm going to show you a website in just a minute. But um, that business plan is your ticket. That business plan will bring you before the banker, before the angel investors, the, the government. And so you want to make sure that um, it is concise, it, it's descriptive, so that when an individual reads it, that they'll say, I think I want to get involved in this. Okay. And then there are times that you, you want a, a business plan for you, not just for funding, to kind of guide you and keep the vision before you. Um, but when it comes to funding, and I'm kind of getting ahead, actually, it's the next part. Determine your startup cost. What is it going to cost me to start a business? Okay, you've got to determine that. It depends on what your product, what your service is. Um, that's going to determine your startup cost. If you don't have to take out a loan, don't start with going to get a business loan. Don't start immediately applying for grants. Um, if you have savings, use that. If you have like a 401k, take a loan where you have made deposit, 
take a loan from there, and then pay it back to get started. Go to your parents, ask them to invest. If you know that your grandparents have saved up a nest egg, ask them if you can borrow from that nest egg for the start of your business, but approach them with a business plan, okay? Let them know that you've thought this thing out, you have a direction for where you wanna go, and you just need the funding to get it started. Um, and then to get funding, what do we do to get funding? Well, there are a lot of small business loans, venture capital, crowdfunding, SBA investment programs um, that you can go to. Now, I'm going to share my screen and let me know if this, oh, oh I think I missed it. Let me go back. Ooh. It's been a long time. Okay, share. And uh, can you see this, Shekinah? Mm, no, I don't see anything yet. Okay, let me go back. Let me make sure I'm not messing it up on my end. Let me go back here. Share. Okay, yep. Okay, and uh, okay, where did it go? Yeah, it's all black now. Let me share this here. Coming up, National Small Business Week. It's a virtual conference. It's um, sponsored by SCORE. And um, so if you go to SCORE.org, that is um, a place that you can get some information and we'll provide that later. Okay, this is where I want to go. Grantwatch.com. Okay, let me get in here. Okay, I'm in. Grantwatch.com has every kind of grant um, opportunity that's there. We have grants for Asia. You can just see right on this side of the screen here. Arts and culture awards, business, capital funding. Hold um, on, Apostle Kennedy. I don't know if we can see it. Can anyone else see it? I don't think I can see it. I see like a black screen. You see a black screen. Okay, it says I'm sharing my screen. It says you're viewing Apostle Kennedy's screen. Okay, see, now I see myself. <laughs> you see me? Yep, I see you. Okay. Okay, take down this, um, take down this web website, grantwatch.com. Oh, I guess I can type it in here. Grant Watch, right. Okay, and that has a list of every type of grant funding um, that's out there, whether it's federal, whether it's private foundation. Um, go here and look again. Yeah, we learned last week um, from our last speaker that there are some grants that will allow you to work from your home or like they pay for yes. out of your home. So that might be a good place. I know someone asked last yes. How do I find that? In, in, in that particular, it has all of those. It has all, it has of everything that's there. And um, it is a subscription. It's a subscription for it, but you can, um, you can go in and look. The very first grant that I wrote, we wrote for an after school program. Again, I'm in nonprofit. We wrote for an after school program in Palm Beach County. Basically with the grant, there's a request for a proposal that's issued, which means that the funder is inviting you to submit a proposal. They want to give you some money. And, um, but you have to meet their criteria, that's one. And then two, your grant has to be written in a, a way that 
not just appeals to them, but it's so much about what they want to do. Now, in your various counties, Broward, Dade, Palm Beach, um, that I know of here, Martin County, there are special agencies like here, um, Children's Service Council, United Way, the Urban League, those are like the major overseers of these large grants. So you want to get on their mailing list, um, and, and I'm sure that it's in other county, also your, um, your city officials, et cetera, they have, have granting as well for small business entrepreneurs. So you want to make sure you get on every list that is out there. And again, this is all in your planning. When you, when you get off the line today, you want to do some writing. What is your business idea? Where do you want to launch it from? Is it an online business? Is it an at-home business? Or is it brick and mortar? You know, who is it that you want to serve? Start working on that business plan. And I'm going to provide to um, Shekinah a, a form that you can start answering those questions to begin to devise it. And then have someone who is... Um, if you're not a writer, have someone. There are a lot of samples and things that are online. Everything you need is online. It's, it's online. But if we'll you know someone that, that has editing skills or what have you, we wrote our first grant for a teen pregnancy and HIV prevention program to run after school for middle school students. The grant was um, issued through the Children's Service Council of Florida. We applied for the grant. Um, again, detail, it took us hours to uh, complete that grant, that request for proposal. And we submitted it. We got a call from one of the persons who's like, she's the one that reads it, everything is there, and she either trashes it or moves it on. And we got a call from her. She said, who wrote this grant? Well, I was the writer and my partner was the one who does the money thing. She actually worked in budgeting for the school system. We were awarded the first year $1.3 million, year $2.4 million to do that program. Ended up um, with the, the county coming to us and asking us to start a charter school for those middle school children who were not performing. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, one door opens another door. If you can get through one door, no matter what the size of the grant is, get through one door, it opens up for other doors. We had people coming to us and I had a billionaire say to me, one time and, and, you know, he used that. He says, if you get your foot in, you won't have to look for money. Money will come to you. It will come looking for you. And that is exactly what we experienced. We received funding, foundational money that we didn't have to pay back to purchase a building, to purchase land, um, we got many grants that provided salaries, so it's there, but the key is your business plan. All right, so I want you to hone in on that. Are there any other questions? Yes. Um, please, if you have questions, feel free to chime in or you can type them in the chat. Um, I do want to kind of echo what Dr. Kennedy is saying right now that it's the same thing we say in academia. Everyone wants to back a winner. So once you solidify one grant, it doesn't matter how big or how small it is. Once you get one, everyone wants to give you more. <laughs> and so, you know, recently I just got my first thousand dollar grant and now I have people emailing me saying, you know, apply for this grant or apply for that grant. And so once you get one, more people want to give to you. And I think 1140 Glory, the Renaissance Conference experienced the same thing this past year. Once we got one grant, then they were willing to give more money. Um, so definitely just go for what is there. Um, 
and and just kind of watch everything else flow. I think the same goes for those who are looking to attend school and that type of thing. Um, so one thing that the Renaissance will help you do at this point, we'll start to look through for uh, look out for some of these mailing lists that you should be on um, and mm -hmm. to stay connected and see what kind of our researchers that are a part of the Renaissance Conference find out. Um, get on our mailing list as well and we'll make sure you get that information or connect with our Facebook group. So we did have another question. George um, was asking, how do you balance the time that you devote to your work or your business um, and your ministry and service and maybe anything else you have? <laughs> how do you find that balance in time? Okay. Um, again, that goes into the planning. That goes into your personal planning. Um, for me, I, I could say I'm semi-retired. You, There was a time where around the clock I worked. I'm not at that place anymore, okay? But you have to find your balance. So what personally I do now, Mondays is kind of my off day and my planning for the rest of the week. I only take emergency <coughs> calls. I mean, if, if someone has a situation and that's the only time available for them, then I will do an evening appointment. But that's generally my day of planning. Um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays, I meet with clients in the office, at their office, or I work from home on that particular project. When it comes to ministry, which is my first, all of its ministry, all of its ministry. When I have clients that come into my office for a coaching or business consulting, um, first thing I find out is, you know, where their faith is, because we're going to pray. We're going to pray. I need God to, uh, you know, reveal to me, give me some inspiration and some insight, because each person that sits in that chair is different. And God has a purpose and plan for each one of their lives. So I, I need to connect with him so that I can connect with them. And, um, you know, Saturdays, I, I kind of take off. One of the things I ran into was taking on too much. Let me tell you about the value. I had a transcription service. And um, I did medical insurance and legal transcription from home. This is when my kids were young and, and um, I was able to work from home. And I hired other women who were good typists, but they did not. Hello, Dr. Kennedy? I think we lost her. Can everyone else see me? I think we lost Dr. Kennedy. Let's see. Yes, we can see you. Okay. I think the work oh, the doctors was switched. So on on one doctor's letterhead was the other doctor's patients. And as a result of that, as a result of that, I lost that account. That was a big deal. So I learned that if you want good help, you got to pay for good help. So there are some things that you're going to have to sacrifice. I thought that I could train someone or what have you. So, you know, as you're developing business and all, you're going to have, that was a bump in the road. That was a bump in the road for me. How I got that particular account, I worked in office for a transcription office, and I was one that assigned work out to the at-home transcriptionist. And in my heart, I knew I wanted to work for myself. So one day I went in and I told the owner, I want to work from home. She says, listen, take what accounts you want. On the other hand, there was one of our transcriptions that called me. She says, Helen, my husband and I were moving across the other side of the state. I'm giving you all of my accounts. So that set me up to really make some money. And my mistake was 
not hiring the best help. So cheap is not the way. Sometimes you got to pay the cost. If you want to be successful in the beginning, you pay the cost. All right. And then when you get down the road, you can kind of ride it out because if you turn around good work and that service, that's anything, the rewards are going to come. Any other questions? Okay. I don't see any other questions and we've just come up on nine o'clock. So if no one else chimes in or has anything, we're going to wrap up. All right, so uh, Dr. Kennedy, thank you so much for your time. I feel like we've taken away so much. So um, if there is any homework that I think we all have to take away from here, first you need to ask yourself or complete the statement, I want to be successful at. So this will tell you where you are, what is it that you truly want to do. You have to define what success is to you. Uh, and you also have to, sorry, and then you also have to, um, start to look at those mile markers and say when you will be successful, how you decide, define success, setting kind of these time frames as to when you plan to achieve these things um, and why you want to be successful. I think that's a big one, making sure we remember our why um, mm -hmm. is very important because things get tiring, things get tough. If you haven't heard recently, there's this video out with Stephen Furtick and, um, and Jake's about crushing. And so when things get to crushing, you have to know that you're producing new wine and that new wine has on new wine skins. Amen. And so um, we want to remember why we're doing what we're doing. Um, and so uh, Dr. Kennedy also mentioned mile markers and that you completing this webinar tonight was one of those mile markers that could be really key navigating success, navigating um, your new wilderness or new experience, walking into that glory land that God has for you. Uh, mm -hmm. So another mile marker could be, you know, contact, contacting Dr. Kennedy for that 15 minute consultation. Also making sure you tune in the rest of this year to the Renaissance Conference and planning to attend the Renaissance Conference next January. We're happy, having it the same time, same place. Um, and so just really staying connected to, the, to this community can help you um, really finding the information you need to um, navigate and find direction in what it is you desire to do in achieving your goals. So uh, with that being said, we are also doing a gift raffle tonight for a gift to be determined. It could be a cup, it could be a t-shirt, it could be gift card. Um, but if you are interested in that raffle, please do send me a message uh, with your email address and we will just do a random drawing. Uh, so we appreciate everyone being here tonight. Uh, Dr. Kennedy, we appreciate you being here. Um, and we look forward to having you back. Honestly, I'm sure there are a wealth of questions um, mm -hmm. on uh, we got a question or a request for your contact information. So if you want to just go ahead and type your email into that uh, chat box, that would be really helpful. You see it there, HelenMKennedy.com. It has my phone information, their email, everything is right there. www.HelenMKennedy.com. Or she kind of knows how to get me any yes, time of the night. You can email or message um, us on Instagram or over our email. Uh, and we uh, have Dr. Kennedy's contact information too that we can get to you through that way. Well, yes. We appreciate everyone's time tonight. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you so much that for having me, Shekinah. Absolutely. Absolutely. We will be back um, most likely in June, but just stay tuned because we might have a pop-up in May as well, uh, just depending on what you all need. So please also feel free to reach out to us and let us know what it is you'd like to hear, what type of business you're in, what type of connections we can make for you. Like I said, we know people all over across the state of Florida, across the U.S. Um, if there's something that you want to do, we're here to work with you to make sure that it gets done. So just reach out to us and let us know what it is that you need. All right, I hope everyone has a blessed night.
and we will stay in contact. Drop your email in the chat if you'd like to be entered into the raffle. All right. Adios. Bye. 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 Thank Time you. Time on here making sure I get all these email addresses. <laughs> all right. Put me in. All right. I got gotcha. you. I will do that. God bless you. All right. God bless. Thanks again. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Adrian. Thank you all. Have a good night. I hope you enjoyed tonight. It was good. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely.